The movie starts with a butcher named Clopé sharpening a knife while another man in another room is trying to cover himself up with newspaper. A garbage truck then appears at the door of the butcher's house, which is located with other apartments in an old building that's surrounded with fog. We observe the man covered with the newspaper and a trash can trying to resemble the garbage, hoping to be taken out with it. As the trash can shakes, the man nervously anticipates the car to take him, but the butcher lifts the lid and jabs his head with a knife. We then see a few people gathered in the butcher's shop and the Koo brothers Roger and Robert, who were first in line, take two pounds of meat for two small bags of corn, which seems to be the currency. The butcher asks George, who is standing in the back of the line, how his wife is doing and George tells him that she's doing poorly. And a taxi then approaches the butcher's store and Clopé finishes serving his customers and notices the taxi. Lewison, the man that arrived, unloads his luggage and tells Clopé that he'd come to discuss the ad for a maintenance job that he'd seen on the newspaper. But Clopé denies releasing the ad and when Lewison was about to leave, convinced that he was mistaken, Clopé asks him about his weight and scans his thin body. He then tells him that the job requires muscle and that he would give him a chance if he was going to be diligent in his work. Lewison accepts this with delight and settles into this peculiar house and he unpacks his things which mostly consist of stuff that he brought from his previous job, the circus. Downstairs, the butcher and the cab driver speak about the town. The cab driver mentions the starvation and how he hopes for crops to grow back. The pessimist butcher tells him that things are never going to get better and walks back to the building. Lewison gets started with cleaning the house and he finds the children of two married tenants, Marcel and Madame Tapioca, staring at him. He starts foaming bubbles to amuse them and during the little show, Juliet, the daughter of the butcher, notices him when walking upstairs to her room. Later that day, a mailman comes to deliver a gift Clopé had ordered for Juliet. Knowing it was something edible, Marcel and Madame Tapioca, with their children, fight to steal it. But Louis Lewison saves the package and the mailman receives it from him and while the mailman was delivering the package to Juliet, he tells her that he wants her but that he will not rush her even though she seems to be not interested in him. It is then revealed in Marcel and Madame Tapioca's conversation that they're waiting for Clopé to kill Lewison in order to eat him. All along, Clopé has been releasing ads on the newspaper with the help of the mailman so he could pretend to hire men but slaughter and sell their flesh to the tenants. We are then taken to a scene where Juliet, who has invited Lewison to taste the cookies gifted to her by her father, practices how she should act while she was waiting for him. He arrives with flowers and she welcomes him without her glasses barely able to see, hoping to be more attractive, and when Louison tells her how everybody likes him and how good the relationship between him and her dad is going, Juliet becomes conflicted. She then tells him to move out, but he tells her that he likes the place. After accidentally seeing her music sheet and finding out that she plays the cello, he brings his musical saw and plays it with her. He then tells her about how Dr. Livingston, his monkey circus partner got eaten and reminded of how the tenants are planning to eat Louison, she tries to warn him. Louison falls asleep and fails to heed her warnings and the next morning, George's wife tries to off herself with a well-structured plan again but fails. Meanwhile, Louison, maintaining Clopé's bed, is given a newspaper to wipe his oiler and he reads the headline and asks Mademoiselle Plissess what trologists are. She tells him that they're outlaws who are barely seen and as they were discussing the newspaper, the two children steal Mademoiselle Plissess's undergarment, then as she was yelling at them, they throw it and it gets stuck on a street lamp. Lewison, being a skilled circus man, claims that the job is for the Australian, a three-bladed weapon that somehow works like a boomerang. He aims it at the undergarment and strikes, and the Australian makes the undergarments fall and they get it. In the next scene, Clopé asks Marcel if he had found a job when he sees him entering the building. Marcel admits that he hasn't, but shows Clopé the tools that he brought from the black market. He then shows him a tool he calls a bullshit detector. Marcel urges him to try it. Clopé says that life is beautiful, and the tool makes noise. Clopé Clopé, irritated by the noise, tells Marcel that if he doesn't have any money, he will have to give up his mother-in-law to pay for his bills and rent. Wait, hold on. Did you subscribe to our channel? Come on guys, you're here, you're watching the video. Help us out by hitting the subscribe button as it really helps out me and my team to make more videos for you guys. And now, let's get back to the recap. Later that day, Juliette goes to her father's shop to return the cookies he'd gifted her and Clopé, glad to see his daughter, welcomes her with a smile and asks why she came. When she tries to return his gift, he slaps her in anger and she begs him to let Lewison go. He says that she always does the same thing in which she replies 
implies by saying that it's different this time, and he tells her that he does what he does because of the circumstances, and if he lets Louison go, he knows that she will leave with him too. He assures her that she won't survive if that happens. Hopeless of convincing her father, Juliet locates and visits the place trollogists are said to live in. She goes into the underground through tunnels, and when she sits down exhausted after trying to find them, they circle her and ask her what she wants. They refuse to believe whatever she says because they all think humans on the surface are predators, and seeing how they're protective of food, she tells them about the huge amount of corn that's found in her father's shop, and as a result, they agree to get Louison out of the house and save him, and after their agreement, Juliet takes a radio for communication with the trollogists and leaves. Meanwhile, Marcel wakes his mother-in-law up and tricks her into going downstairs by throwing away her spun thread. As she was then following the thread and collecting it in her hand, she reaches the end and Clopé was waiting for her. He then tells her to scream so Louison could be concerned to follow her voice and fall into his trap. But Louison, who took Juliet's herb, was asleep and was not able to hear anything. When she screams, Robert thinks that it's Aurora that was screaming and goes downstairs to check and gets his leg cut off by the butcher. The next morning, we see all the tenants taking their share of Marcel's mother-in-law and Robert's leg. The trollogists study their map and sneak into the building to confirm what Juliet had told them, and after doing so, they decide to start executing their plan. Aurora, who sees them sneak in, screams and tells her husband. The trollogists quickly fall back, and her husband, not being able to see them, considers that his wife must be hallucinating. Later, the mailman delivers a newspaper with a report that says that Louis and Circus work will be shown on television that night. Clopé tells Placest to inform Louisen that he's going to be on TV, and Louisen seems happy and excited after hearing this. When he sees the newspaper, he remembers the performance about to be aired and mentions an act called the Tika Tika. Mademoiselle Placest, curious about what this is, inquires about it. They then both start performing this walk, which happens to be a dance where Louisen pretends to have three legs. Julie hears the music in Louisen's room, and she opens the door and sees Louisen dancing with Mademoiselle Placet. Jealous, Julie apologizes for disturbing the two and leaves. Using the radio she brought earlier, Julie starts informing the trollogists underground about the situation in the building. As they were getting ready to start their mission, the mailman's radio detects the frequency and he carefully listens in and tries to find out what they were up to. When the show starts, Julie goes to Louison's room, and Julie is surprised to see Louison and Livingstone performing. Her anger turns into laughter, but she tries to keep her composure. Mr. George tells Aurora to come watch the show with him, but she was yet again busy organizing her death in the bathroom. She's got everything in place because this time she was not willing to fail. She had tied a gun with a rope and she's also tied it to the doorknob so when her husband tries to open the door, he indirectly pulls the trigger and shoots her. Gas is being released into the room and fire is made ready so the room would explode and she's also prepared pills so she would swallow before she hangs herself and gets shot. She basically did everything she could to guarantee death. And meanwhile, only a few seconds into the show, all the tenants' TVs start malfunctioning. Louison, who thinks that it's the wind that's causing it, heads to the roof to fix it. Julie, who's realized that this was a trap her father had set in order to kill Louison, follows him and she screams his name and tells him to get back to the house. He couldn't seem to hear her due to the noise from the storm, then her father sneaks up from behind and attacks him. As Louison was fighting back, Julie runs up to the roof and takes the knife from her father's hand. And George, in suspicion that his wife is not responding to his calls, tries to forcefully open the door and causes the gun to be slightly misplaced. The bullet hits the rope she was trying to hang herself with, and she falls and spits out the pills that she was about to swallow. Meanwhile, Robert finds his brother Roger whispering through the pipes to Aurora. Shockingly, it's disclosed that the voice Aurora was hearing did not emerge from her brain, but from another room in the building. When George finds his wife on the ground, he disappointedly picks her up and tries to get her out of the room, and not knowing about the gas, he tries to switch off the light, and this causes the explosion, killing both him and his wife. The explosion causes Clopé to fall and hang facing Lucien's room. Earlier, Mademoiselle Placep has entered this room, causing the trollogists to mistake her for Lucien and abduct her. Julie seeks help from the trollogists and rushes to her room and begins to connect the radio, and the mailman finds her and threatens her with his gun, and he tries to force himself on her, but Lucien gets there in time for her rescue. The trollogists take what they think is Lucien covered up with a carpet to the underground and they uncover it, but Mademoiselle Placep, who seems to be furious about this, 
Alice tells them to let her go. The Trologists then contemplate proceeding with their mission, and convinced that they haven't done their part of the contract, they untie Mademoiselle Pisep and head back to the surface. Clopet and the tenants were trying to knock down the door to the room where Louis and Julie were hiding, understanding that it wouldn't take long for them to get caught if they stay there, enter the bathroom and stuff all the gaps under the door, in the sinks and in the bathroom with their clothes, and they start filling the room up with water. At the same time, the mailman sights one of the trologists and shoots him. After he put his gun back in his bag, the children put glue on it. When Clopé and the tenants finally knock down the door and head back to the bathroom door, the water almost fills up. Louis and Juliet share a passionate kiss and the door is opened, and the huge amount of water stored in the room gushes down throughout the building and sweeps away Clopé and the tenants. The floor in the room caves due to the water it's been holding, and Clopé comes from underneath the room determined to kill Louison. Mademoiselle Plusep, who'd finally found her way out of the underground through the tunnels, gets hold of the Australian Louison's weapon as she was heading to Clopé. When Clopé says that Louison is done for this time, the bullshit detector that happens to be there starts to make a noise. Clopé, even angrier this time, cuts the tool in half and he throws his knife at Louison and misses. Mademoiselle Plusep comes in with the weapon and says that this is the job for the Australian and just when she was about to strike, the trologists drop a net from above and start pulling Julie out. The mailman unknowingly pulls out his gun that is filled with glue and tries to shoot the trologists, and the gun explodes on his hand and he falls. Clopé then throws the Australian, but just before it reaches Louison, it changes its course and penetrates Clopé's head. Clopé's death marks the end of his brutal slaughters, and the movie wraps up with Julie and Louison playing on their cello, and the fog finally clears as they get ready to embark on a new chapter in their lives. And this is how today's movie ends boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, and most of all, subscribe to my channel, I love you guys so much and I promise to see you on my next recap, bye!